Uh, how's it going, people? Got one of these left. The last of the Bohemians. Of course, I'm not drinking uh, beer to this video. It's only three instances of things coming to pass. This is just to keep me company when I got nothing else to drink. Bit of a departure from the last chapter, which was extremely thirsty. Very nice. But, in honor of my Jägermeister shirt, I'm having a little Jäger. This will do the trick. Let's see. This is a this is a CD I made from an old cassette somebody gave me like back in the nineties. I don't even know know who this person is anymore. <laughs> but it's cool, and I'm hoping it won't get uh, uh, matched as uh, somebody's property. I just want to play some of the background books. Chapter forty-eight. Amal uh, Amalekiah incites the Lamanites against the Nephites. Moroni prepares for the conflict. A true patriot, patriot, and a mighty man of God. Where's one? And now, the kingdom pass. And now it came to pass that as soon as Amalekiah had obtained a kingdom, he had began to inspire the hearts of the Lamanites against the people of Nephi. Yea, he did appoint men to speak unto the Lamanites from their towers against the Nephites. Two. And thus, he did inspire their hearts against the Nephites, insomuch that in the latter end of the 19th year of the reign of the judges, which would make it, according to the footnote, B.C. 72, he, having accomplished his designs, Thus far, yea, having been made king over the Lamanites, he sought also to reign over the Lamanites. This isn't working. I'm going to get some other music. Yep. Uh, I love this. Uh, I wish I could get a real factory copy of this and follow him if he's got a band now. Oh, I'll leave that first part in and I'll just play some Grateful Dead doing the Twilight Zone so far. Nobody's made a fuss. I hope they never will. All right. Sorry, the other one was just a little too talky. Turn this down a tiny bit. In the latter end of the 19th year of the reign of the judges, he having accomplished his designs thus far, yea, having been made king over the Lamanites, he sought also to reign over all the land, yea, and all the people who were in the land, the Nephites as well as the Lamanites. Okay, we get it. Three. Therefore, he had accomplished his design. For he had hardened the hearts of the Lamanites and blinded their minds and stirred them up to anger insomuch that 
he had gathered together a numerous host to go to battle against the Nephites. Four. For, for he was determined, because of the greatness of the number of his people, to overpower the Nephites and to bring them into bondage. Five, and thus he did appoint chief captains of the Zoramites, they being the most acquainted with the strength of the Nephites and their places of resort, and their weakest parts of their cities. Therefore he appointed them to be chief captains over his armies. Six. Gotta love those Germans. There's... Pow! <laughs> All right. Six. And it came to pass that they took their camp and moved forth towards the land of Zarahemla in the wilderness. Seven. Now... Now it came to pass that while Amalickiah had thus been obtaining power by fraud and deceit, Moroni, on the other hand, had been preparing the minds of the people to be faithful unto the Lord their God. 8. Yea, he had been strengthening the armies of the Nephite. At least that will work. <laughs> and erecting small forts or places of resort so he's not just praying <laughs> getting everybody to get all faithful while you're at it uh, build an army and some pit traps and some walls and and switch everything around because those other guys will know <laughs> yeah God did that he made them that smart all right yeah, erecting small forts or places of resort, throwing up banks of earth round about to enclose his armies, and also building walls of stone to encircle them about, round about their cities and their borders of their lands. Yea, all round about the land, like you just said at the semicolon. Before the semicolon. <sighs> That's a repetition for a gold book. Nine. And in their weakest fortifications he did place the greater number of men, and thus he did fortify and strengthen the land which was possessed by the Nephites. Ten. And thus, he was preparing to support their liberty. Because he's a patriot. Their lands, their wives, and their children, and their peace. And that they might live unto the Lord their God. And that they might maintain... That which was called by their enemies the cause of Christians. How about that? So, definitely a good, what, 70, 70 something years? No, even further back, come to think of it. A century. A century earlier. They're Christians. They got the jump start because they seem to be really psychic. Uh, 
here in the land of the free. <laughs> or so they say. Yeah. Eleven. And Moroni was a strong and a mighty man. He was a man of a perfect understanding. Yea, a man that did not delight in bloodshed. A man whose soul did joy in the liberty and the freedom of his country and his brethren from bondage and slavery. So they are different, huh? What's up with that? Bondage and slavery. <laughs> just wondering what the difference is. I guess one you're tied up, the other one you're just working. Okay. <laughs> Twelve. Yea, a man whose heart did swell with thanksgiving to his God for the many privileges and blessings which he bestowed upon his people, a man who did labor exceedingly for the welfare and safety of his people. Thirteen. Yea, and he was a man who was firm in the faith of Christ in B.C. 72. That's before the Common Era. It used to mean something else. Or maybe it never did. Maybe I was just told it did. Alright. Firm in the faith of Christ, and he had sworn with an oath to defend his people, his rights, and his country, and his religion. Gotta protect that. Even to the loss of his blood. Fourteen. Now the Nephites were taught to defend themselves against their enemies, even to the shedding of blood. Even if it were necessary, yea, it is, and never to raise the sword except it were against an enemy, except it were to preserve their lives. They needed to be told that, huh? <laughs> mm. Fifteen. And this was their faith that by doing by so doing, God would prosper them in the land. Or, in other words, if they were faithful in keeping the commandments of God, that he would prosper them in the land. They're clarifying. <laughs> Yay! Warn them to flee or to prepare for war according to their danger. So that's what happened. Yeah, Moroni's spider sense went off, you know. <laughs> it's an enemy approaching. Start doing shit. Stop praying. Get to work. <laughs> We're dealing with real world shit now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's when they start fortifying. It's fucking brilliant. Yeah, they... Alright, they were warned anyway. Sixteen. <laughs> and also that God would make it known unto them whither they should go to defend themselves against their enemies, and by so doing, the Lord would deliver them. Well, why does he just prevent the war completely? He's God. No, but you gotta go up there and get your ass killed. Because <laughs> he wants to see what happens. Even though he knows, I guess. <laughs> Uh, 16. <laughs> and also that God would make it known unto them whether they should go to defend themselves against their enemies, and by so doing, the Lord would deliver them. And this was the faith of Moroni. And his heart did glory in it, not in the shedding of blood, but in doing good 
in preserving his people, yea, in keeping the commandments of God, yea, and resisting iniquity, 17, yea, verily, verily, I say unto you, he really means it, you got an extra verily, he really means it, that's like saying very, very, <laughs> verily, verily, It's so sh Renaissance. It's so not anything. Nice try, though. <laughs> Fairly, verily. <laughs> Let's see where I am. Seventeen. Yay. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if all men had been, and were, and ever would be like unto Moroni, behold, the very powers of hell would have been shaken forever. Yea, the devil never would never have power over the hearts of the children of men. Or if God did his fucking job... But you know what's really interesting is, I mean, this devil guy, I mean, it seems like, all right, you know, we got three and one God, you know, I think the Hindus got like at least eight and one, you know, they're all aspects. Come on. Someone's got multiple personality syndrome here, right? Sorry, I'm running long here. All right. Yeah, God's like, you guys fight the devil. I'm up here doing, it's classified. Something else, or nothing. 18. Behold, he was a man like unto Ammon, the son of Mosiah. Yea, and even the other sons of Mosiah. Yea, and also Alma and his sons. For they were all men of God. 19. Now behold, Helaman and his brethren were no less serviceable unto the people than was Moroni, for they did preach the word of God, and they did baptize unto repentance. And all men, whosoever would hearken unto their words, even child molesters and serial killers. All right, clean slate. Oh, you just fucked it up again. Get over here, other bad dozen for you. Twenty. And thus they went forth, and the people did humble themselves because of their words, insomuch that they were highly favored of the Lord. How, do you, how can you tell? <laughs> and thus they were free from wars and contentions among themselves. That's right, they get like angelic visits. We don't. They do. Yea, even for the space of four years. Wow. It's a long as contention. 21. But... As I have said in the latter end of the nineteenth year, yea, notwithstanding their peace amongst themselves, they were compelled reluctantly to contend with their brethren, the Lamanites. 22. Yea, and in fine, their wars never did cease for the space of many years with the Lamanites, Notwithstanding their much reluctance. It's getting old, huh? It's like this book. 23. Now, they were sorry to take up arms against the Lamanites because they did not delight in the shedding of blood, like you already said. Yay! Fear time. Oh. 
Yay, and this was not all. They were sorry to be the means of sending so many of their brethren out of this world into an eternal world. That happens right after you die. Everything's about eternity after that shit. No expiration date on anything, apparently. Unprepared to meet their god. <laughs> that would be a trip. Doubt it. Highly. That wasn't much. Mm. 24. Nevertheless, they could not suffer to lay down their lives that their wives and their children should be massacred by the barbarous 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 cruelty of those who were once their brethren yea and had dissented from their church that's where they went wrong and had left them and had gone to destroy them by joining the Lamanites 25 yea they could not bear that their brethren should re rejoice over the blood of the Nephites, the good guys, at least the chosen ones, so long as they were in, so long as there were any who should keep the commandments of God, for the purpose of the Lord was if they should keep the, his commandments, he should prosper in the land. <gasps> That's like, what, the third time they said that line? I didn't research this. I should have looked at this chapter. I could have done a nice shred job on it. <sighs> Moving on. Peace. The fuck. Out. See you in uh, chapter 49, I hope. And have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is you're having at this moment, right now, or in the near future.